Welcome to this first Sunday service of 2021. I wish you all a happy new year. Here are some of the blessings we can look forward to. In Christ, God has given us every spiritual blessing in heaven. In Christ, he chose us before the world was made. In his love, he chose us to be his holy people, people without blame before him. And before the world was made, God decided to make us his own children through Jesus Christ. God gave his wonderful grace to us freely in Christ, the one he loves. In Christ, we are set free by the blood of his death. And so we have forgiveness of sins because of God's rich grace. The Holy Spirit is the guarantee that we will get what God promised for his people, so that we will bring praise to God's glory. With these promises in mind, let us join together in our opening hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation. pray. Almighty God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we bow in your presence. We bring before you the year now past, for all that is good and worthy of praise, for opportunities to do good, for the love you have shown and we have received, we give you thanks. Where we have sinned and fallen short, forgive us. When we worry over what is past, set us free. At the start of this new year, we thank you with all our hearts that we have come to know your mercy and your goodness. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Saviour, through his perfect life, his sacrificial death, and his glorious resurrection, you have provided our salvation. 
Thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Helper, for the gifts that enable us to worship in spirit and in truth, and for the fruits of character that help us to grow more like Christ. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us in Christ by your Spirit. And may our lives reflect our thankfulness in willing service and Christ-like character. This we ask in the name of him who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now our first scripture reading is from Psalm 147, verses 1 to 11. The reading is taken from Psalm 147, verses 1 to 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds, he supplies the earth with rain and makes the grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of a man. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Thanks be to God. Amen. The lectionary psalm for this Sunday is Psalm 147. When I first read it, I struggled to see a coherent pattern. Of course, it's not a logical argument or an orderly narrative or a precise piece of legislation. It is a psalm. It's a song. It's poetry. But even so, it does seem to jump about a bit. I couldn't help thinking it was like a page of the Radio Times. See if you can spot the programmes. Verse 2. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. That's grand designs. Verse 4. He determines the number of the stars the sky at night. Verses 8, 16 and 17. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain. He spreads the snow like wool and scatters the frost like ashes. That should be easy. The weather forecast. Verses 8 and 9. He makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle. Country file. Is there anything that links it all together? If we look at the beginning and the ending, the first verse and the last verse, the first words and the last words, we do find a unifying theme. Here's how it begins. Praise the Lord. 
And here's how it ends. Praise the Lord. The theme which links everything together is praise. And so perhaps we are still on the pages of the Radio Times. Songs of Praise. The Book of Psalms as a collection comes to a wonderful climax. The theme of praise runs right through the last five Psalms and our Psalm belongs to this group. They all start and finish the same way. They encourage us to praise the Lord. Indeed, they command us to praise him. And so to our next hymn, give to our God immortal praise. divide Psalm 147 into three sections. Each of them begins with a call to praise. The first section is from verse 1 to verse 6. Praise the Lord! How good it is to sing praises to our God! How pleasant and fitting to praise him! What a great way to start the new year! This opening verse tells us that praising the Lord is attractive, it's good, it's pleasant, and so it's something we can enjoy doing. The pandemic may have robbed us of the opportunity to sing as a congregation, but God's word reminds us that we can make music in our hearts to the Lord. It's good and pleasant. And we're told it's fitting, so it's something we ought to do. It's a mark of our fallen human nature and our fallen world that there is often a conflict between what we want to do and what we ought to do. But when our focus is on God, these two things come together. It is both pleasant and fitting. Verses 2 to 6 remind us that God is not remote and uninterested in us. He is involved in the world that he created. In verse 2, we discover that God is involved at a national level. 
the Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. That's one way God is involved in his world. He chose the children of Israel to be a light to the nations. And when they failed to live up to their calling and were defeated by their enemies, God did not abandon them. We too need God at a national level. And he wants us to pray about that. Verse 3 reminds us that God is involved at a personal level. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. I wonder if that describes you. Brokenhearted. Wounded. God knows what you're going through. He cares for you as an individual. He is the God of all comfort. In verse 4, the psalmist moves from the national and the individual level to the universal level. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. God knows the minutest details of our individual lives, and at the same time he holds the limitless vastness of the universe in his hands. Moving on to verse 5, God's greatness is seen in two areas, his power and his understanding. Great is our Lord, and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Again, in our fallen world, we rarely see these two qualities combined. The people who are strong and powerful often lack understanding and wisdom, and the people who are wise and understanding often lack power and strength. It's a mark of God's greatness that these qualities come together in him. Although God is such a great God, the God of creation, the God of the universe, he cares for us. The final verse of this section brings us back to our individual response to the Lord. The Lord sustains the humble but casts the wicked to the ground. In our society today, pride is paraded as a virtue. You can't just sponsor a television programme. You've got to say you're proud to sponsor it. It's not cool to be humble. But the Lord sustains the humble and casts the wicked to the ground. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks with a grateful heart.
Verse 7 of Psalm 147 contains the second call to praise. If verse 1 reminds us of the value of praise, verse 7 speaks of the accompaniment to praise. Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Make music to our God on the harp. There is, of course, the musical accompaniment. For this psalmist, the harp was the preferred instrument. This is not meant to be prescriptive. There is no instrument which is exclusively required for praise, not the harp, nor the organ. At the same time, there is no instrument which is automatically excluded from praise. Psalm 150 bears this out. I personally am glad we have such a variety of instruments to accompany our singing, though in spite of my origins, I'm not too upset that we don't have any bagpipes. But there's a far more important accompaniment to our singing that is mentioned here. And it's mentioned first. Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Without the accompaniment of thanksgiving, our singing will be totally flat and our praise will be empty. As we enter a new year, be resolved to cultivate the gratitude attitude. In verses 8 and 9, we are reminded to be thankful for God's faithfulness in the natural world. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. Moving on to verses 10 and 11, they tell us what pleases God. To be more precise, first, what he's not impressed with, and then what does impress him. Verse 10 sounds a little strange when translated literally, and in these days of obsession with all things physical, it sounds slightly risky. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of the warrior. I think the message translation puts it quite well. He's not impressed with horsepower. The size of your muscles means little to him. These things are mentioned because these are the things that impress us. Today we've got a whole lot more horsepower and there's still a lot of kudos in having huge muscles. These are the things that impress us, but God's not that impressed. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. What God is looking for are the spiritual qualities of reverence and hope, a trust that accepts unconditionally that he loves us and will never fail. So let's affirm God's faithfulness in our next hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And after this hymn, we will have our second scripture reading, Psalm 147, verses 12 to 20.
This reading is from the Old Testament, Psalm 147, verses 12 to 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. He keeps your gates strong. He blesses your people. He keeps your borders safe and satisfies you with the finest wheat. He gives a command to the earth and what he says is quickly done. He spreads snow like a blanket and scatters frost like dust. He sends hail like gravel. No one can endure the cold he sends. Then he gives a command and the ice melts. He sends the wind and the water flows. He gives his message to his people, his instructions and laws to Israel. He has not done this for other nations. They do not know his laws. Praise the Lord. Amen. In the first two sections of this psalm, we were reminded how great God is and the qualities which should be seen in us as we bring him our praise. Humility thankfulness, reverence and trust. At the start of this final section, verses 12 to 14 are directed particularly to Jerusalem and the Old Testament people of God. They speak of security and blessing, peace and provision. Extol the Lord, Jerusalem, praise your God, Zion, he strengthens the bars of your gates and blesses your people within you. He grants peace to your borders and satisfies you with the finest of wheat. God protects his people from danger and provides the very best for them. If you look out of the walls, there is nothing to fear. If you look within the walls, there is everything you need Nothing to fear, even as far as the borders of the land. Everything you need, and of the highest quality. In the remaining verses of the psalm, the focus is on God's word, and the important part it plays. In verses 15 to 18, there are echoes of Genesis chapter 1, where creation came into being through the word of God. He sends his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He spreads the snow like wool and scatters the frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like pebbles. Who can withstand his icy blast? He sends his word and melts them. He stirs up his breezes and the waters flow. Our thoughts are directed again to the natural world and the way God cares for it. At this time of year, the mention of snow, frost, hail and the icy blast may not be quite what we want to hear. But God is still in control of the seasons. He sends his command. He sends his word. Peter speaks in the same vein in his second letter. Long ago, by God's word, the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. That's 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 5 and 7. The world as we know it began when God spoke, and the world as we know it will end when God speaks, and not before. The world will end with judgment, but there will be new heavens and a new earth where righteousness dwells. It's this same word which informs our praise and enables us to draw near to God. Verses 19 and 20. He has revealed his word to Jacob, his laws and decrees to Israel. He has done this for no other nation, 
They do not know his laws. These verses have a historical context which is now firmly in the past. Christmas has reminded us that God's word has been revealed to us in Jesus, and it is for all nations. The light of his word is available to all, shining for all, to direct our paths and inspire our living. And so the psalm ends as it began, with a command, in the light of all this, praise the Lord. And now let us pray. Let us pray to God the Father, who has reconciled all things to himself in Christ. Let us pray for peace among the nations, that God may rid the world of violence and let peoples grow in justice and harmony. For those who serve in public office, that they may work for the common good. For Christian people everywhere, that we may joyfully proclaim and live our faith in Jesus Christ. For those who suffer from hunger, sickness or loneliness, that the presence of Christ may bring them health and wholeness. For those who have lost loved ones and live with a sense of loss and grief, that they may know the peace of God which passes all understanding. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Our final hymn combines praise with prayer. Lord of all being throned afar, thy glory flames from sun and star, centre and soul of every sphere, yet to each loving heart how near.
And now, unto him who is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Saviour, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.